This improved version of Ford's KA Plus City Car gets a more up-to-date three-cylinder petrol engine, better infotainment provision and this fashionable active body style for those wanting it. As before, particular strengths of this design include a spacious cabin and rewarding handling. Potentially then, there's a lot to like here. A small car can have big ideas, even if it's city-sized. Now, for proof of that, you only have to try the model that we're going to look at here, the KA Plus. It was launched in 2016 and then usefully revised in the spring of 2018 to create the model that we're going to test today. Now, you might know the KA model line. In its original first-generation form, Ford's smallest contender was difficult to forget, bug-shaped, beetle-browed and hailed by many at its original launch in 1996 as the most innovative thing the industry had produced since the early Mini. Over half a million examples of that Mark I model were sold over a production run that lasted an incredible 12 years with hardly any changes. The car's success lay in its simplicity, which made it cheap to make and sell. It was a formula Ford should have stuck to. They didn't. In 2008, the second generation KA tried to move a little more up market and offer a fashionable, slightly more affordable alternative to people who couldn't stretch to trendy small products like BMW's new era Mini. But the Fiat 500 that the Mark II KA was based on was already satisfying these kinds of customers and doing it with cute credibility that the Ford simply couldn't match. Now that left the KA awkwardly placed with a three-door only body style which really didn't save you very much over a far more practical five-door Fiesta once the Ford dealers had done their sums. Sales were, unsurprisingly, disappointing. Hence the need for a different approach with this KA Plus, which was launched late in 2016. It wasn't adventurously styled. The Blue Oval brand's one Ford global product policy now discourages cars of that kind. But in compensation, buyers were offered five doors and a KA for the first time and near super mini standards of cabin space. Low pricing was promised and achieved thanks to an affordable Indian production plant and super simple underpinnings, which were borrowed from the old sixth generation Fiesta. Now, unfortunately, Unfortunately, uh, the engine wear was also borrowed from that elderly design and the KA Plus wasn't very long in the showrooms before that began to feel a bit dated as part of a package that, to be frank, needed an extra injection of character and hence the need for the heavily revised KA Plus model range that we're going to look at here. Now, the main petrol engine is now an all-new TIVCT three-cylinder unit. There is a diesel option for the first time. Uh, equipment and media connectivity standards have both been improved, and buyers can also specify an SUV-style active trim level at the top of the range, and we've got that one here today. Sounds promising. Let's check this car out. The original version of this KA Plus, which was launched in uh, 2016, surprised us a bit with its agile handling. It shouldn't have done because, well, in the modern era anyway, small Fords are almost always very good to drive. Uh, this one, though, was conceived in Brazil, built in India, and expected to sell in its largest numbers to Asian buyers who just don't share the European preference for rewarding driving dynamics. Plus, it was based on a rather elderly, old-shaped Fiesta platform. It was all uncomfortably reminiscent reminiscent of the earliest version of the brand's Echo Sport small SUV launched in 2014, which, true to Ford's global product policy at the time, was essentially the same car that you could buy in Brasilia, Bengal or Baghdad. That approach was rather predictably doomed from the start. Now, sure enough, the earliest version of the Echo Sport pitched about, rode poorly, and eventually needed over 30 significant dynamic revisions before Fall of Europe was finally happy with it. It was a salutary lesson for the brand. You can have a global approach with product design, but global products that don't take into account continental preferences are never going to work. Fortunately, though, the company had got that message by the time the original KA Plus model was introduced to the market. Uh, the car arriving in Europe with a very different engineering spec to the Indian market Figo-badged version of that same design. 
for the Euro spec model, Ford added in a stiffer front subframe, faster steering, aero tweaks to reduce turbulence, uh, Fiesta spec hydraulic engine mounts, extra sound deadening and different door seals. There was also a completely different ride setup featuring more sophisticated springs and dampers, revised suspension geometry with different rear bushes and a front anti-roll bar specified to be 47% stiffer. It all meant that a dramatic difference could be made to the driving dynamics and sure enough we found ourselves impressed by the way that the original KA Plus flowed through the turns with class leading poise and agility. Plus we liked the way that its spring and damping setup was so effective at insulating you from small bumps in the road. What we didn't like so much though was the engine that Ford provided beneath the bonnet, an old tech four cylinder 1.2 litre Duratec unit that suffered against segment rivals in terms of refinement, drivability and efficiency. So we were pleased to see as part of the changes made for this facelifted model that the brands replaced that old power plant with the entry level three cylinder TIVCT 1.2 litre petrol unit that was first developed for the seventh generation Fiesta. To maintain continuity, this engine is offered with the same 70 and 85 PS outputs as that old Duratec lump, and in both cases it claims to offer 10% more pulling power between 1000 and 3000 RPM, uh, which ought to be right where you need it for optimised acceleration. In the entry level 70 PS model, Resta 62 takes 14.6 seconds, provided you're quick with the fairly slick shifting Fiesta sourced 5 speed manual gearbox. There's no auto option. Uh, the top speed of that base variant is 102 miles an hour. In this uprated 85 PS version, though, the figures are improved to 13.5 seconds and 105 miles an hour. Now, on paper, those readings sound okay for an unpretentious city car, but on the road, the reality is that this Ford still needs to be thrashed more than you'd want if higher speeds are to be reached with any kind of real urgency. It all reminds you that the TIVCT engine's improvement in mid-range grunt is based on a really mediocre starting point. There is an option that allows you to substantially improve on the level of pulling power that you can have in a KA Plus, and it's a very unusual one for a model selling in the city car sector. Ford's decided to offer the 95 PS version of its 1.5 litre TDCI diesel in this model, which seems a rather curious decision given that no mainstream competitor in this class offers a black pump fueled option. The company expects a tiny take up on this TDCI variant, uh, but it would suit someone who might regularly be venturing further afield in their KA Plus. Uh, with diesel drive installed, pulling power is almost doubled to 215 newton meters, and the performance stats improved to 11.4 seconds en route to 111 miles an hour. We've already touched on ride and handling, and it's just as good as it ever was on a KA Plus. Yes, even in the active variant that we're trying here, which features a ride height increase of 23 millimeters. Plus it gets a wider track, a larger front anti-roll bar, revisions to the steering, and optimized front shock absorbers that feature a special hydraulic rebound stopper that smooths out the bumps or jolts you get over rougher surfaces. KA Plus regulars might notice a touch more body roll than you get on the ordinary version of this car, but it's nothing significant and it's certainly not enough to detract from the kind of handling poise which is a world away from what you get in a small SUV. Venture out onto the highway and refinement is okay by class standards but not exemplary. Uh, the petrol engine has quite a coarse note and there's enough road and wind noise to make a really long trip a bit wearing. Of course this little Ford is much more at home within the city limits. Now we found it agile around town, easy to park and perfect for parents thanks to its spacious size. In short, it ticks a lot of boxes. Think of a Ford KA, and if you know this product line, it's still quite hard not to picture the almost willful aesthetic contrariness of the bug-shaped first-generation version. There's nothing quite like that here, although Ford has tweaked the front grille, uh, the front apron, and the bumpers of the standard model. Uh, they've changed the headlamps, and they've added C-shaped daytime running light mouldings in a bid to give it a little more aesthetic presence. If you want a KA Plus that stands out a bit more on the school run, then you'll need the SUV-style active version that we're testing here. 
From a profile perspective, uh, the main difference with this active variant over the standard car is a so-called rough road suspension package, and that raises the ride height by 23 millimeters. Uh, the black wheel arch moldings add a bit of purpose too. Uh, we're not quite so sure about the rather awkward looking silver roof rails, but they certainly suit the whole lifestyle vibe. Uh, KA Plus active buyers also get these unique gray finished 15 inch uh, four by two spoke alloy wheels. The same rims come with a silver finish on the ordinary ZTEC trimmed variant. KA Plus buyers who have tried other city car sector models are, we think, going to be very pleasantly surprised at the size of this Ford. If you think of, say, a rival Fiat Panda, and nearly four metres long, this KA Plus is a full 224 millimetres longer than one of those. And it's a whopping 334 millimetres longer than something like a Kia Picanto. As Ford likes to put it, what you're getting here is big for the price of small. The other thing you're getting, we should point out, is a small runabout that's a pretty insignificant 111 mils shorter than a much pricier Fiesta. And that's something you'd think might give Blue Oval brand dealers a few headaches. Uh, the marketeers, though, think that KA Plus buyers will be quite different people from Fiesta folk. And once you start to examine this car in detail, then you begin to understand why that may well be the case. In place of the chiseled, slanty lines of a Fiesta, sense and sensibility reigns here. Uh, the boxy, glassy shape sticks to a regimented regime of horizontal creases. Now true, it is a kind of profile that could have been launched at a motor show 20 years ago, but it is also still one that just works if you place a premium on practicality. There's a little more stylistic expression here at the front where that revised trapezoidal grille we mentioned earlier is flanked by smarter headlamps that smear themselves around the corners of the car. A uh, second opening nestles beneath this broadly beamed bumper, either side of which are front fog lamps which incorporate the revised daytime running lights we mentioned earlier. And at the rear, well, there's nothing fancy here, just a simple set of rear light clusters, a slab-sided tailgate, and a lower number plate panel with a black plastic finish, which will more easily shrug off the kind of scrapes and parking knocks that would more obviously damage this area if it was body colored instead. Uh, further up, an integrated high-mounted spoiler houses the third brake lamp, and it emphasizes this model's relatively lofty stance. Uh, the roof line is 48 millimeters higher than that of an equivalent Fiesta. This active variant is set apart by these black C-shaped mouldings in the corner of the bumper here, plus there's privacy glass and this lower silvered faux skid plate. Of course, as usual, uh, what is rather more important is the stuff that you can't see, with nearly 50% of the old-shaped Fiesta-derived Global B underpinnings fashioned from immensely strong, high-strength steel. Time to take a seat inside, but before we do, let's touch on something that we don't normally talk about, the ignition key. Now, as long as you avoid entry level trim, you'll find that this one is programmable, and that means that it can be uh, set to automatically restrict elements of this car's functionality. So things like maximum speed and stereo volume. Now, it can even deal with seatbelt reminders and prevent vital safety systems from being switched off. This is a really great idea, which will provide vital extra peace of mind if you regularly lend your car out to someone, say your university-aged son or daughter. Now, you get two of these so-called my key fobs when you uh, take delivery so just keep an unrestricted admin key for yourself and use the other one to keep borrower driving in check Well, let's get behind the wheel. Now, the TIVCT engine isn't the only thing this facelifted KA Plus model borrows from an entry level Fiesta. That Super Mini also donates this 6.5 inch Sync 3 center dashed infotainment screen. Now, this is a standard feature providing you avoid entry level trim. If you're not familiar with the Sync package, it doesn't take long to adjust to it with a central dash monitor uh, divided into sectors, which allow you to activate audio, phone, or mobile app options via either voice control or the touchscreen icons. Now, you can't have navigation built into this package, but you can stream a navigation app in from your phone thanks to this setup's uh, standard Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. This monitor adds a little extra sophistication to the cabin ambiance, and that's much needed because otherwise it is fairly basic. 
uh, the Indian budget buyers who choose the Ford Figo this model is based on don't care much about the fineries of fashion. And the Blue Oval brand's European designers have been limited on what they can do to improve things. A few token efforts have been made to smarten up the interior. Uh, piano black inserts on the steering wheel and on the upper part of the centre stack, for example. Uh, there's a grain finish on the instrument panel that does its best to disguise the hard, brittle plastic that's used. And chrome accents have been applied to the door release handles, some of the centre console controls and the air vents. Extra cost touches like climate control and heated seats can be added in to further dilute the bargain basement ambiance. And this time around, you can have a quick clear heated windscreen too. Otherwise, though, it is what it is, a cabin appropriate to its price point. Not quite as smart as the price of your Volkswagen up, but noticeably nicer than what you get in a cheaper bargain brand model. Now, if you are familiar with the Ford parts bin, you might moan about the fact that the door handles and the power mirror controls hail from a turn-of-the-century Fiesta. And it's annoying that this tactile leather-stitched steering wheel adjusts only for rake, not for reach. Um, through it, you view an instrument binnacle with clearly presented blue backlit dials, although the rev counter gauge is the smallest we've seen this side of a Lotus Elise. Uh, there is also a trip computer which offers driving range, average fuel consumption, average speed, oil life, tyre pressure and mileage readouts. The supportive seat positions you higher and more uprightly than you would be in a Fiesta, but that's not a problem for comfort, and it also ensures excellent all-round vision, which is just as well because, as you'll discover when it's time to reverse, the rear seat pillars really are quite thick. Uh, otherwise, the ergonomics are pretty well thought through, although the heater controls are mounted quite low, and the mirror switch is something of a stretch too. As for storage solutions, well, Ford says that there are 21 of them scattered all around the cabin. Indian buyers must particularly prioritise cup holders because there are plenty of those, no fewer than four of them available between the two front seats here, with a storage cubby um, just in front. Uh, the door pockets have been compartmentalised to take small bottles. There's a reasonably sized glove box, and you get a little shelf in front of the gear lever for your smartphone. That's conveniently placed uh, just above a couple of USB ports and a 12 volt socket. Enough. Let's move to the area of this car that might really sell it to you, the back seat. Now this is where the extra body length that we mentioned earlier really pays off, providing for a wide door that makes this the easiest car in the class for rear passengers to get in and out of. And once inside, well, there's certainly not much to complain about for a model of this kind, unless you're irritated by the lack of things like grab handles, coat hooks and door pockets. Uh, we've certainly been in plenty of Fiesta-sized super minis from the next class up that felt more cramped than this KA Plus model's cabin. Now, that tall, glassy roofline certainly helps here, and there's enough legroom for two six-foot adults to sit behind two front-seated friends of a similar size. Um, but this Ford's advantages don't only lie with its extra space. Now you might not be aware that the majority of popular city cars in this segment, uh, models like the Volkswagen Up and the Peugeot 108, make rear seat folk do without two crucial features. Proper fully opening windows and a centre mounted rear bench belt. The latter issue is a particularly annoying caveat for parents with kids. There are no issues like that in this case. The windows here not only go up and down in the way that they should, but as an option, they can even be electrically powered. As for the properly provided centre rear belt, well, that wouldn't be much good if accommodating a trio of adults back here meant cramming them in like sardines. Now, fortunately, that isn't the case. Uh, you would certainly need to be on friendly terms if there were three of you across the rear bench here, but you could cope with the experience on short to medium trips in a way that really wouldn't be possible with most other cars in this class. Uh, the indented seatbacks further help here, and there are Mac pockets and twin ice fixed mounts should you need them. Plus there are coin cubbies built into the door cards and you get easy access to those twin cup holders between the front seats. Finally, let's check out the boot. Now, an immediate irritation is the lack of any sort of tailgate handle, but with this facelifted model, you do at least get a button to release the tailgate latch. Uh, you can also use the button on the ignition key or the one provided on the dash. 
Once the tailgate is raised, the 270 litre space revealed is the largest in the city car class. It's fractionally bigger than models like Hyundai's i10 and Volkswagen's up. Nearly 30% larger than the kind of cargo bay that you'd uh, get in something like a Peugeot 108 or a Vauxhall Viva. Plus, it's square and unimpeded by wheel arch intrusion. No sort of adjustable height boot floors offered, so there is a bit of a drop from the bumper sill to the floor, but it's no worse than most in the class. Uh, now, in the case of this active model, the underfloor area is rather difficult to get to thanks to this standard but very useful rubber load liner. Um, once you do raise it, though, you'll find a little extra space and a tyre repair kit, uh, which we would advise you to delete in favour of the optional spare wheel for extra puncture peace of mind. Now, space-wise, things aren't so good if you push forward the 6040 split-folding rear bench. The 849-litre space revealed is actually one of the smaller luggage areas in the segment with the seats in this configuration. Still, most likely buyers will be more concerned about the carriage of smaller items, things like carrier bags, for which hooks are provided on either side of the cargo sidewall. The KA Plus has to compete in a crowded market sector, so to help it stand out, Ford's kept the lineup quite simple and pitched the starting price low. There's one five-door body style and five-speed manual transmission is mandatory. The range kicks off with basic studio trim and that's priced at around £11,000. Now that entry-level variant's only available with a 70 PS version of the 1.2-litre TIVCT three-cylinder petrol engine that almost all KA Plus buyers choose. Uh, most of them will prefer to find the £1,000 extra that's necessary to elevate themselves to mid-range ZTEC spec. That's priced in the £12,000 to £14,000 bracket. At this level, there's a much wider engine choice. The 1.2-litre power plant, the one we're trying here, uh, is available in both 70 and 85 PS guises. Plus, you can now have a diesel if you want it, the 95 PS version of the Blue Oval brand's 1.5-litre TDCI unit. You'll need around £14,000 to get a version of this Ford that fuels from the black pump, though, which probably explains why the company expects just 4% of KA Plus buyers to opt for a TDCI version. This top KA Plus active body style comes with either an 85 PS 1.2 litre petrol unit for around £13,000 or a 1.5 litre diesel for just over £14,500. Either way, you're looking at a premium of just under £900 more to pay over the more standard ZTEC variant. We reckon a lot of KA Plus buyers are quite happily going to find the extra cash to get themselves a much more characterful and interesting product. Ford reckons this active variant's contribution to the KA Plus model mix will be about 30%. We think it might be more. Anyway, it certainly looks better value than the active version of Ford's Fiesta, which has hardly any more interior space, but has a starting price of nearly £18,000. So, what are the alternatives to this Ford in the city car segment, and how does this KA Plus model's value proposition stack up against them? Well, let's see. Uh, now, if you're not too familiar with this market sector, we can give you a quick thumbnail guide. Uh, there's a single design known either as a Volkswagen Up, a Skoda Citigo, or a Seat Me, or the one sold as either a Peugeot 108, a Citroen C1, or a Toyota Igo. Plus, apart from this Ford, there are six other choices that you can make if you want something different. Renault's Twingo, Kia's Picanto, Hyundai's i10, uh, Fiat's Panda, the Smart 4.4 and the Vauxhall Viva. Now, base versions of nearly all of those contenders can slightly undercut a KA Plus on price, but once you equalise specifications, you should find that there's not much in it. Crunch the stats and you'll find that apart from the Fiat Panda, all these city car alternatives are slightly more efficient to run than this Ford, in petrol form anyway, uh, but none of them can match this KA Plus model's interior space or its rewarding handling. So, as usual, it comes down to what you want. It might also be worth pointing out that Ford is effectively unique in this class in offering a diesel engine option. Fiat's Panda does too, but only in a top 4x4, guys, which isn't really relevant to a typical city car buyer. Now, there aren't many direct rivals for this flagship SUV-style active variant, just the Fiat Panda Citycross, uh, the Kia Picanto X-Line, the Suzuki Ignis, and the Vauxhall Viva Rocks. All these models require the same kind of budget that Ford requests for this car in its petrol form, about £13,000. Efficiency-wise, the Picanto X-Line is the pick of the crop in this segment. Uh, the rival Fiat and Vauxhall models uh, each return similar fuel and CO2 stats to a KA Plus active. Get beyond that issue, and this Ford looks a good choice. 
It's better to drive and it offers more passenger and luggage space than its rivals. And there's the option of diesel power, which you can't have on the four rivals we just mentioned. If, having considered all of that, you are attracted by their KA Plus proposition, then you're going to need to know just how generous the Blue Oval brand has been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that now. Now, you wouldn't expect bargain basement studio trim to include very much, in which case you might, at least to some extent, be pleasantly surprised. As part of the changes made to the improved KA Plus lineup, studio spec gains a DAB radio, and as before, there's also the clever device dock, which is designed to hold your smartphone, your sat-nav, or your MP3 player safely in place in the dedicated dash top clip-in holder. Other studio stuff includes Bluetooth, aux in and USB connectivity, plus there are front fog lamps with integrated daytime running lights, powered mirrors, electric front windows and body coloured bumpers. Practical touches include driver's seat height adjustment, a perimeter alarm with remote central locking and the Ford Easy Fuel Filler setup that makes it impossible to have brain fade and disastrously fill the tank with the wrong kind of fuel. Nearly 90% of KA Plus buyers, though, opt to give Studio Spec a swerve and instead choose mid-range ZTEC trim, not least because, as mentioned earlier, at this point in the range you get the option of the Pokia 85 PS petrol engine or 1.5 litre diesel power. The key equipment update for ZTEC versions of this facelifted KA Plus is the addition of Ford's latest Sync 3 infotainment system, and that now operates via a 6.5-inch screen, which is 2.3 inches larger than the monitor that was previously used. It's also quite a bit cleverer, too, in core operating Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring capability and emergency assistance, which uh, activates to tell the rescue services where you are if the airbags go off. ZTEC buyers also get a 6 beaker DAB audio system, 15-inch alloy wheels, air conditioning, a leather-wrapped steering wheel and cruise control. The other key ZTEC spec feature is the Ford MyKey system that gives you two ignition keys and allows you to program them to uh, preset personal preferences. So, for example, you could assign one of them uh, to your teenage son or daughter and use of it would automatically restrict things like maximum speed and stereo volume while preventing vital safety systems from being switched off. Now let's look at the equipment level you'll get if you go for this active model. Key elements include rough road suspension and that gives the car an extra 23 millimeters of ride height and there's what Ford calls a rugged body styling kit which basically means bespoke wheel arch extensions and extra black elements on both front grills. Rear privacy glass, roof rails and special grey finished alloy wheels also come as part of the deal. As do all weather floor mats and a bespoke interior featuring what Ford calls Sienna hazel coloured trim. Now on to options, and that's the section that won't take us very long because there aren't many. Uh, if you don't want your KA Plus painted in white, then you're going to have to pay extra for the paintwork because that's the only standard colour available. Uh, other than that, it's around £500 more to get one of Ford's premium colours. Uh, avoid base level trim and you'll get the further option to pay around £750 more for an exclusive colour, ruby red. And if you've gone for this active variant, there's another exclusive colour, uh, that's Canyon Ridge, and that's the one that we've got here here. Otherwise, virtually all the options you can have require you to have first selected ZTEC trim. On the ZTEC variants, you can also opt for a smarter painted machine design of 15-inch alloy wheel. And beyond that, well, many KA Plus buyers tend to go for the city pack that bundles together rear parking sensors, electric back windows and heated power folding door mirrors. Now, something you might well need in the city, satellite navigation can't be ordered in any form with this car. However, thanks to the Sync 3 system, you have the option of channeling sat-nav into the car through your smartphone instead. Uh, new features introduced into this KA Plus range for this facelifted model include auto headlamps and wipers, an auto dimming rear view mirror, and an engine stop-start button, all four elements uh, bundled together into an extra-cost technology pack. Now, you might also want to look at the winter pack, and that gives you heated front seats, a driver's seat armrest, and a quick-clear heated windscreen. 
Other optional extras include an electronic automatic temperature control so you can set and forget the air conditioning to your ideal temperature. Uh, we'd also want to add in the optional spare wheel to replace the tyre repair kit, which is all you get as standard should you ever have a puncture. Uh, now, if you go for that, though, you can't specify a tow bar. Um, in addition to these items, uh, the Ford Accessories catalogue offers a variety of extra cost elements, uh, things like a boot liner, a first aid kit, wind deflectors for the windows, floor mats, mud flaps, child seats and rear parking sensors. Let's finish on safety. Now you don't really expect radar driven electronic kit like autonomous braking on an inexpensive city car and you don't get it here. But as I mentioned earlier, you do get the clever emergency assist feature as part of the SYNC 3 connectivity system. And that automatically alerts the emergency services if the airbags go off and gives them the car's exact location. Otherwise, safety provision is limited to the basics, twin front, side and curtain airbags and ice fix child seat fastenings, plus the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control. Uh, the ABS brakes flash in emergency stops to warn following motorists. A deflation detection tyre pressure monitoring system alerts you if there's a puncture. And hill start assist uh, will prevent the car from rolling backwards as you get ready to pull away on uphill junctions. The main change Ford had to make to this KA Plus was to pension off the original model's ancient old four-cylinder 1.2-litre Duratec petrol engine, which in technology terms had really fallen behind the prevailing class standard. Uh, we had quite high hopes for the 1.2-litre TIVCT unit the brand has introduced in its place. For a start, it's a lot lighter because it only features three cylinders and because it uses aluminium for its block and cylinder head. Plus, there's twin independent variable camshaft timing, a two-stage variable displacement oil pump, uh, reduced levels of internal friction, and an integrated exhaust manifold, which is supposed to optimize the exhaust system warmer. An engine start-stop system has been added in two, and in addition, the brand specifies special low-friction engine oil. It equips this car with low rolling resistance tires, and it's incorporated regenerative charging into the engine spec, uh, which maintains efficient charge levels in the battery by harvesting electrical energy when the vehicle's coasting or braking. Now you'd expect that amount of engineering work to produce more than a 4% improvement in efficiency, but that's all that's been delivered here. Now true, it is enough to put this Ford slightly ahead of comparable Fiat Panda and Vauxhall Viva models in this segment, but every other rival can do significantly better when it comes to fuel and CO2 readings. Now whether you choose uh, the 1.2 litre TIVCT power plant in 70 or 85 PS guises, you're looking at 56.5 mpg on the combined cycle and 114 grams per kilometer of CO2. Go for this active variant and that extra 23 millimeters of ride height makes quite a difference. Uh, you're looking at 49.6 mpg and 129 grams per kilometer. Either way, if you drive with some consideration for Fregati, you should be able to cover 400 miles or more between filling station stops. Uh, switch your attention to the 1.5 litre TDCI diesel and you're looking at 76.3 mpg and 99 grams per kilometer for the standard model and 68.9 mpg and 108 grams per kilometer for the active version. Having said all that, there are some pluses on the running cost side. Uh, take insurance, uh, the base 70 PS studio model attracts an affordable Group 3 E rating. Uh, if you spec the same engine with mid-range ZTEC trim, you're looking at Group 4 E or Group 5 E if you want the 85 PS version of that same unit. Uh, KA Plus ZTEC diesel is Group 10. Uh, KA Plus active insurance groupings see the petrol model rated at Group 6 E, while the diesel variant again attracts a Group 10 E rating. What else? Uh, well, servicing is required every 12,500 miles or once a year, depending on use. Um, when it comes to booking your KA Plus in for a checkup, you can do this online through the My Ford portal. This is part of the Ford Blue Service Scheme, which wraps up all the care and maintenance of your car into one bundle. And that also includes a free 30-point e-check of vital parts. 
Here, any work required will be highlighted with red, amber or green traffic light warnings on a report that you'll be given, which will rank items needing attention in order of their importance. Uh, there's also the Ford Service app, which you can download to your phone for free. That lets you locate your nearest dealer to make maintenance bookings. Plus, as a bonus, the app can help you find petrol stations and even has a park me feature, which will remember where you left the car uh, to save hunting for it in busy multi-stories. With an eye on the future, you'll also want to know what your KA Plus is likely to be worth when the time comes to sell it on. Now, the good news here is that the Ford performs better than many of its rivals. Industry predictions suggesting that a petrol-powered active variant like this one will hang on to around about 38% of its list price after three years and 36,000 miles. Now, that puts it ahead of the likes of the Hyundai i30 and the Vauxhall Viva. Let's finish with the warranty. That's an unremarkable 36-month, 60,000-mile deal, which also includes one year of Europe-wide breakdown assistance. On top of that, there's an anti-corrosion guarantee, which lasts for 12 years. This improved KA Plus model offers evidence that the Blue Oval brand is starting to get the hang of the whole global car thing. Having a product for all markets is fine, providing the design in question can be tuned for the needs and preferences of different continents in the way that this KA Plus now has been. Now, that's not to say that this city car wouldn't be better if it had been created from scratch for Europe, like a rival Volkswagen Up or Peugeot 108. It probably would be. But by careful development of this South American-conceived, Indian-made package, Ford's been able to narrow the gap to established class contenders like those. Uh, the driving dynamics, in fact, are class-leading. Now, inevitably, there are a few issues. We had expected the introduction of the new three-cylinder TIVCT 1.2-litre engine to make much more of a difference to this car's running cost efficiency figures than it actually has. Still, the figures in question are no worse than those you'll get from a rival Vauxhall Viva or Fiat Panda model. And in this Ford's case, there is now the option of diesel power if you really do need better fuel consumption and lower CO2 readings. Otherwise, providing you don't have unrealistic expectations when it comes to interior quality, there's a lot to like here. Now, we think this ruggedized active version is a useful addition to the range, and it will uh, account for an even higher proportion of KA Plus sales than Ford expects. Uh, the SYNC 3 infotainment system is a good step forward, too. This model's real trump card over its rivals, though, is something that it has always had, class-leading rear cabin space and boot capacity. It's not just about feet and inches, either. So many cars in this segment irritate us by making buyers do without a conventional three-seater rear bench and properly opening rear windows, both a standard on this Ford. And in summary, well, what we have here is a reminder that all city cars are not the same. This one, we'd say, is the only contender in its class, large and practical enough for a super mini sector buyer to realistically consider, and that is a strong sales point. It all means that, in our view, family buyers shopping for a city car really have to have this one on their list.